into the place where uh, if you can do a good sound bite, uh, if you can get somebody to capture you uh, saying something good, listening to something good, uh, then that raises you to prominence and popularity. The problem with that is this, uh, that if you do something uh, that gets their attention, uh, if you want to keep their attention, uh, you got to keep doing the same thing. Uh, and what if God shifts you uh, in a whole nother direction? Uh, oh God, I'm going to preach whether y'all want me to or not. Uh, what if God tells you to say something uh, that the masses won't agree with, uh, that the people won't like, uh, that the people will be at odds with? Uh, what are you going to do? Please God or please people? Uh, save your relationship with God or try to save your audience? Uh, I feel like preaching today. God told me to tell us uh, that the things of God are for the purpose of glorifying God and God exclusively. Uh, and if you want to be a star, uh, if you want to shine brightly, uh, you can go out in the world and do that. Uh, but trying to shine on God's time uh, will get you set back a couple of yards. chapter number four Daniel chapter number four uh, if you have been uh, reading with us uh, throughout the course of our 21 day uh, big things fast uh, you will know that we are now reading the book of the prophet Daniel Daniel's writing is a very interesting writing simply because Daniel, along with Ezekiel, uh, deal with a lot of revelatory insight as it relates to uh, the moves and the moods of God. Uh, also, we will find uh, that there is in the book of Daniel, in the book of Ezekiel that we've just finished reading, that there is a lot of what is known as allegory, uh, metaphors, types, shadows, and similes, things that symbolize uh, and represent other things, spiritual truths in the kingdom. Many of these truths are things that are yet to come. Many things we are yet living, we are now living, uh, just now, uh, in the history of the world, in the manifestation of the visions and the prophecies of Daniel. What makes Daniel so intriguing is that Daniel teaches us that God has a way of transplanting you, watch this, into a place of darkness so that your light can shine. Let me say that again, that God has a way of, of transporting you into places of darkness just so your light can shine. Daniel has three friends, a Hananiah, Azariah and Mishael, known as Shetrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who are transported, watch this, during a time of exile. I don't have time to talk about this, but they're exiled with a nation of disobedient people, even though they themselves were not disobedient. Sometimes the good do suffer with the bad. All right. So that just answers your question, why you? Because sometimes the good do suffer with the bad. Yet they are there to be a light in darkness. Daniel now is the leader of this quartet. He is both the spokesperson and he is the one who has the greatest authority. And you know Daniel's story. Uh, eventually he will go 
and be thrown into a lion's den. And I think I'm going to talk about that next week. Ooh, God have mercy. Because sometimes God will allow you to go in darkness and then go further into darkness just so your light can shine much brighter. Uh, ain't nobody talking to me now. Daniel also is an interpreter of dreams. And that is his gift. His, his, his primary gift. Yes, he's smart. Yes, he's gifted. Yes, he has uh, great intellectual capacity, Mother Greer, but uh, uh, he is an interpreter of the dreams that uh, God sends people. The first dream he interprets is really interesting. If y'all have been reading, you'll find this out. That he's literally promoted because he interprets a dream and the king has said, listen, I need all of you who are supposed to be astrologers and, and seers and all that kind of stuff. I need y'all to uh, um, interpret this troubling dream that I have. And they say, well, king, tell us the dream. He said, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to, if you are who you say you are, let your source tell you the dream. And, and he said to all of them, I'm going to kill all y'all if nobody can interpret the dream. And Daniel hears it and says, King, wait a minute. Don't kill all of us. Just give me a chance. So Daniel goes and he prays. God shows him the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had. Gives him the interpretation of the dream and saves everybody's life. <sighs> there are people who are connected to you who really don't know the value of who you are. Because of who you are to God. I wish I had a witness in here. They're missing a whole lot of stuff that the enemy has intended to take them out. That's the first dream. Daniel is promoted. His boys are promoted. But we get now to chapter number four. And uh, I want you to read this if you haven't already read it. You should have read it yesterday. But I want to read uh, um, starting at verse number 19. Daniel 4, verse number 19. If you have it, say amen. If you're still looking, say Lord help. Oh, I got some real Bible readers. Y'all know how to find Daniel. I got a smart church. <laughs> Daniel chapter number 4, beginning at verse number 19. Where the Lord says, Then Daniel, also called Belteshazzar, was greatly perplexed for a time and his thoughts terrified him. So the king said, Belteshazzar, do not let the dream or its meaning alarm you. Belteshazzar answered, my lord, if only the dream applied to your enemies and its meaning to your adversaries, the tree you saw, which grew large and strong, with its top touching the sky, visible to the whole earth with beautiful leaves and abundant fruit providing fruit for all, giving shelter to wild animals and having nestling places in your branches for the birds. Your majesty, you are that tree. You have become great and strong. Your greatness has grown until it reaches the sky and your dominion extends to the distant parts of the earth. Your majesty saw a holy one, a messenger coming down from heaven saying, cut down the tree and destroy it, but leave the stump bound with iron and bronze in the grass of the field while its roots remain in the ground. Let him be drenched with the dew of heaven. Let him live with the wild animals until seven times pass by for him. This interpretation is the dream for you. I want you to go over to chapter number five. Chapter five, verse 17. Then Daniel answered the king, you may keep your gifts for yourself and give your rewards to someone else. Nevertheless, I will read the writing for the king and tell him what it means. Your majesty, the most high God, gave your father Nebuchadnezzar sovereignty and greatness and glory and splendor. 
Because of the high position he gave him, all the nations and peoples, every language dreaded and feared him to those who wanted to be put to death. He put them to death. Those he wanted to spare, he spared. Those he wanted to promote, he promoted. And those he wanted to humble, he humbled. But when his heart became arrogant and hardened with pride, he was deposed from royal, his royal throne and stripped from his glory. He was driven away from the people and given the mind of an animal. He lived with wild donkeys and ate grass like the ox. And his body was drenched with dew of heaven until he acknowledged that the Most High God is sovereign over all kingdoms and on the earth and sets over anyone he wishes. But you, Belshazzar, his son, have not humbled yourself though you knew all this instead you have set yourself up against the Lord of heaven you had the goblets from his temple brought to you and you and your nobles your wives and your concubines drank wine from them you praised the gods of silver and gold of bronze iron wood and stone which cannot see or hear or understand but you did not honor the God who holds in his hand your life and your ways Therefore, he sent the hand and wrote the inscription, the inscription that was written, Mine, Mine, Tekel, Parsin. Here is what the words mean. Mine, God has numbered the days of your reign and brought it to an end. Tekel, you have been weighed on the scales and found wanting. Perez, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Then Belshazzar's command, at his command, Daniel was clothed in purple, a gold chain was placed around his neck, and he was proclaimed the third highest ruler in the kingdom. That very night, Belshazzar, king of the Babylonians, was slain, and Darius the Mede took over the kingdom at the age of 20, 62. That's enough. In my haste, I did not read a key verse in understanding this text. And uh, we're going to talk about it anyhow. Verse 13 says, so Daniel was brought before the king. And the king said to him, are you Daniel, one of the exiles my father, the king, brought from Judah? <sighs> Here's what I want you to know. Sometime between the first dream that Daniel interpreted and the second dream, there was a space of 66 years. So between Daniel 4 and Daniel 5, 66 years have lapsed. The king in chapter 5 does not know Daniel. I mean, he knows him, but he does not recognize or honor him because Daniel now is an old man. And so it looks like his time has passed. Remember, we're talking about the repurposed life and this series, a small series entitled Back from the Backside. Will you look at somebody beside you and say, neighbor? There is no expiration date. All right, y'all, okay. All right, y'all missed it. So uh, tell somebody who the devil's been messing with their mind, telling them their season is over, telling them God ain't going to use them no more. Tell them, neighbor, there is no expiration date. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. There is no expiration date. <sighs> Good morning, family. My brothers and my sisters, in the early 1970s, precisely 1972, grocery shoppers clamored for more information about the quality of food on supermarket shelves. And under the pressure from activists, including them distributing pamphlets deciphering sell by codes, food makers began to put dates on their labels. Those dates have quickly become 
to be known as the expiry or expiration date. However, what many people don't know is that at least here in the United States, most dates that we see on food items are for freshness and not for safety. That is to say that when you see sell by on an item of food, when you see sell by on a can of produce, when you see sell by on anything that is in the grocery store or on the shelves of a convenience store, it does not suggest, my brothers and my sisters, that the food is not safe. It just suggests that it is not as fresh as it was when it first arrived to the store. I would like to share with us and say to us, uh, Minister Tammy Williams, that a product past its best if used by date may not taste as good as something fresh off the shelf but it is often perfectly healthy to eat. The amount of time that a food item has spent on the shelf, its preferred texture by the consumer, and its coloration and tint are not reliable measurements of its nutritional values. I can remember uh, growing up in Mama Long's house and when I would go to the refrigerator and uh, I would grab uh, a jar of mayonnaise to make me uh, a ham sandwich. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Make me a turkey sandwich and I would, uh, I would look at the sell by date on, on the jar and I would give, uh, take the sell by jar to Mama Long and say, Mama, uh, uh, so, uh, this uh, uh, mayonnaise is out of date. And uh, 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 i never forget, uh, I did it one time uh, and I threw it away. And uh, uh, the worst beating that I ever got was because I threw some mayonnaise away that had a sell-by date on it because it said best if used by. Mama Long had to instruct me. Mama Long had to tell me, son, just because the date is on the jar does not mean the contents on the inside is not good. And so it is, my brothers and my sisters, while the world wastes, watch this, about 2.5 billion tons of food every year. Uh, the United States discards more food than any other country in the whole world. Nearly 60 million, between 60 million and 120 billion tons every year, the United States throws food out, watch this, because it has passed the expiration date. Well, at the outset of this message, I would like to suggest to all of us, my brothers and my sisters, that when you are uniquely chosen, when you are uniquely anointed, when you are uniquely appointed and gifted by God for a specific purpose, no one can do that thing that you have been assigned to do but you. No lapse in time, no change in season, no fads or trends, secular or spiritual, dictate the effectiveness or the necessity of the gift that God has given to you. The Apostle Paul puts it this way in Romans chapter 11 verse number 29, for the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance which is to suggest that if God decides to gift you in a particular way, if God decides you to call you to do a particular thing, he will not change his mind about what he has gifted and called you to do. The gift, watch this, is permanent. The calling is permanent because God is permanent. And the gift comes from God and it is an extension of who God is. The gift that you have is that which God has entrusted you with. It is that part of his persona. It is that part of his personality. It is that part of his character. It is that part of his ability that he says, I created you. I formed you. I, I made you a package for, watch this, the eternal purpose of God. And God God says, when I gave it 
to you. I knew everything there was to know about you. I knew the season that you would go through. I knew the ebbs and the flows of your life. I knew your ups and your downs. I knew your ins and your outs. I knew the roads that you would travel. I even knew the time that I would tell you to use the gift and you would tell me no. But despite all of that, because I cannot change my mind, the gift and the calling are without repentance. All you have to do is tell me yes. And when you tell me yes, what it does is it activates and in some instances reactivates purpose. Oh God, I thought I was preaching to a people who know the beauty of being repurposed by God. I thought I was talking to a people who will be honest with me and yourself and everybody around you that there have been times that you have gone the opposite way and in the opposite direction that God has told you to go but you repented got back on course and you found out that the gift that was in you was reactivated I thought I was preaching to people who have a appreciation and who have a love for God watch this because he gave you not just a second chance but he's giving you other chances. Am I preaching to anybody besides me who will be honest enough to say this is my story and this is my song? And I'm not talking about to him. My story is there are times that I knew what I should have done and I didn't. There were times that I what did not use my gift because I was mad and frustrated and did not want to use it within the context that God wanted me to use it in. All right, since I, I wish I had Jonah as a church member because Jonah would tell you I had a gift. I had a gift and God wanted me to use a gift in a context. He did not want me to use it in. He told me to go to Nineveh and I said I'm going to go in the opposite direction and I had to go through a storm. I had to go through turbulence. I had to go through a series of hellish events but by the time God got finished working on me, by the time I realized that it's God's way or no way by the time I realize that if I don't yield I will die God spit me out God caused the fish to spit me out on the shores of my assignment and I went running faster than I ever ran before because I'm so thankful for his grace and his mercy and for another chance is there anybody besides me who's thankful for another chance let me see who I'm preaching to let me see who can witness to what I'm saying. Let me see those of you who will be honest and say I ain't always done what I was supposed to do. Uh, uh, there were times that I knew I was supposed to do it. Knew that God had gifted me for it and chose not to do it anyhow. But because of his grace and his mercy, I stand here today and say Lord here am I. Send me. Lift your hands and shout yes Lord. And so it is the permanence of the gift, watch this, uh, that guarantees that purpose is always intact because the gift is permanent. My purpose is permanent. Oh God, because my gift is eternal. Uh, as long as I live, my purpose remains the same. Somebody ought to shout, yes, Lord. So that neither obscurity or the lack of visibility or notoriety can diminish the value of the gift. Just because you don't know me don't mean I don't have the gift. Just because you don't recognize me, it does not mean that I don't have the gift. Just because I have been hidden away, tucked away, off the scene for a minute, it does not mean that I don't have the gift. Oh God, I'm going to preach whether y'all want me to or not. Popularity has never equated to powerfulness. <laughs> talking just because you ain't popular it don't mean you ain't powerful just because you're not the critics choice it does not mean that you are not 
critically and crucially anointed by God. Just because you don't have a big name, it does not mean you don't have a big gift. Just because everybody ain't calling you don't mean you don't have a holy calling. Talk, Kevin Long, I think I will. A gift, my brothers and my sisters, then, that God has given you is permanent. Will you touch somebody beside you and say, you still got it, uh-huh. I know that was the first message in this series, but I need you to understand that it, it does not matter. It does not matter who knows you. It does not matter who recognizes you. It does not matter who respects you. It does not matter who reveres you. It does not matter who lauds or applauds you. You still got the gift because it is without repentance. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, I'm trying to move from here. Oh God, but God has not changed his mind about you. He has not changed his mind about your future. God, God has not changed his mind about your destiny. And that's why you can't get all twisted and torn out of socket. That's why you can't get all puffed up and mad uh, when people don't recognize who you are. When people show other people more uh, respect and honor than they show you. Uh, because the gift that you have ain't about you no way. Uh, people will celebrate celebrity, uh, but they will not celebrate spiritual anointing. Uh, uh, but I feel like preaching here today will you tell your neighbor neighbor I may not be a celebrity but I am spiritual and I am anointed by the God of all heaven oh God I'm gonna preach whether y'all want me to or not oh God oh God oh yeah I, I, I got it tell your neighbor I got it I got it I'm not bragging I'm not boasting but I know who I am better yet I know who's in me and greater is he that is in me than he that is is in the world. Will somebody lift your hands, open your mouth and shout yes Lord. Shout yes Lord again. And because the gift is permanent. Because the gift will never leave. Because the gift is always there. I want to suggest to you that a gift that may have been in demand in one season and dormant in another season may in another season return and be in demand again. Let me say that again. A gift a gift that was in demand man in one season and it lays dormant in another season will also come to another season where the same gift is in demand. Oh God, y'all miss what? Let me say that one more time. I said the gift may have been in demand in one season. It may be dormant in another season, but God will send another season around where the gift that lay dormant will be in demand again. Okay, let me see if I can preach it the way y'all understand it. They will need you again. Will you touch somebody beside you and say, they will need me again. All right, tell them they will need you again. For whatever reason, they may have disregarded what God is doing in you. For whatever reason, they may have gotten from you what they thought they needed and moved on. But I promise you, if God is God and he is, if they didn't handle you right, didn't handle the gift right didn't handle what God is doing in you right they will need you again somebody ought to shout yes Lord in this place well my brothers and my sisters I, I want us now to look at the text because some 66 years have lapsed between the time of King Nebuchadnezzar's death and the reign of King Belshazzar 66 years have gone by Daniel now is a semi-retired officer he is a man, watch this, who is of seniority. He has moved on. He's moved off the scene. Uh, uh, Belshazzar has bought a new court in. He's bought new help in. He's bought new gifts in. He's bought new authorities in. He's bought people in, watch this, who are more modern in their thinking and more modern in their knowledge. But he has a dream. Somebody shout, he has a dream. And he has a dream. And the dream is so frightening that it causes his need to knock. It causes him to tremble and he calls all of his people around him and he says to them, I'm not going to do like my daddy did. This dream scared me
me so much, I'm not going to trust nobody else to tell you. Here is my dream. I saw a tree, and the tree grew up real tall, and, and the tree was doing all this. I had saw all of this stuff, he said. He said, and while me and my family, we were partying, the Bible says that he and his wives and his concubines, they were sitting around partying, and they asked, watch this, that the cups and the plates that came from the temple in Jerusalem might be bought so they could eat their food and drink their wine out of it. Can I put a pin right there? That ain't what This ain't what the message is about. But you got to be careful how you use the things of God for your own advantage. Let me preach again. Let me preach it again. Let me preach it again. I said we better be very careful that we not try to shine on God's time. We better be very careful not to use gifts, anointings, abilities, talents, uh, and everything that God gives us uh, so that we can glorify ourselves. Uh, I'm going to preach whether y'all want me to or not. Uh, it is absolutely amazing uh, that ministry has moved now uh, into the place where uh, if you can do a good sound bite, uh, if you can get somebody to capture you uh, saying something good, listening to something good, uh, then that raises you to prominence and popularity. The problem with that is this, uh, that if you do something huh, that gets their attention, huh, if you want to keep their attention, huh, you got to keep doing the same thing. Huh, and what if God shifts you huh, in a whole nother direction? Huh? Oh God, I'm going to preach whether y'all want me to or not. Huh? What if God tells you to say something huh, that the masses won't agree with, huh, that the people won't like, huh, that the people will be at odds with? Huh? What are you going to do? Please God or please people? Huh? Save your relationship with God or try to save your audience. I feel like preaching today. God told me to tell us that the things of God are for the purpose of glorifying God and God exclusively. And if you want to be a star, if you want to shine brightly, you can go out in the world and do that. But trying to shine on God's time will get you set back a couple of yards. Lift your hands, open your mouth and shout yes Lord. Word of God declares that Belshazzar has this dream. And uh, when he called all of these leaders, Daniel was not called. But the Bible also says that the queen mother, <laughs> uh, Belshazzar's mama, uh, said, son, I know you got all these new folk around you. I, I, know, I know that you're modernized in your administration, uh, but your daddy had a man in his administration. And his name was Daniel. And he interpreted your daddy's dream just as it was. And Belshazzar said, call for him and bring him. And when, when Daniel came into the presence of Belshazzar, Belshazzar tells him the dream. And when he tells him the dream, uh, he, he, uh, Daniel was honest with him. Daniel said, King, I need you to understand something. Um, I know you're not going to like what I'm about to share with you, uh, but uh, it is what it is. What I didn't tell y'all was this, uh, that, Bel, uh, that Belshazzar said, whoever interprets the dream, I will give him, watch this, clothes of scarlet, and I will make him a rich man. And I will elevate him to the third highest position in the kingdom. Y'all keep that in mind. Y'all keep that in mind. Here's what I need y'all to understand. For 66 years, Daniel was off the scene. But just because his shelf life had ended, it didn't mean that his gift was not powerful. I came to preach to those of you and the enemy is messing with your mind and telling you it's too late. Telling you you've missed your season. Telling you you've missed the window of opportunity. Telling you you'll never get married because you're not desirable. 
Telling you you'll never get another chance to get uh, the money that God said you would have. Telling you that you can't go back and get your degree. Telling you that it's too late to be a good mate or a good parent. Telling you that it's too late to open the business. Telling you that it's too late for the dream to manifest. God told me to tell you the expiration date may have passed. But there is no expiration date for what God wants to do in your life. Will you just touch three people around you and say there ain't no expiration date tell them the devil is a lie as long as there's breath in your body God still has time to do it as long as God is giving you strength there's still time for God to do it every time that God wakes you up it might just be the day for your new beginning am I preaching to anybody in here the devil's been messing with your mind telling you to pack up your bag and go home. He's been telling you to get out the fight, get out the race. Will you lift your hands, open your mouth and shout no expiration day? Three things I want to share with you y'all as I'm moving on. Because some of y'all are frustrated because you got the gift and it looks like the opportunities aren't coming. <laughs> you got the smarts but it looked like you're being passed over. You got the goods, but it looks like nobody recognized it. Point one, y'all right now, you catch this. Whereas you were once forgotten, you will soon be remembered. <laughs> Whereas you were once forgotten, you will soon be remembered. Listen to what happens. The queen mother says to Belshazzar, um, I remember that Daniel interpreted Nebuchadnezzar's dream. My brothers and my sisters, when you are in a season of repurposing, oftentimes you will find yourself like Moses hidden on the backside of the mountain, estranged from the last season of your life. When you are in a season of repurposing, you will feel as if you have been forgotten. Last Sunday, we celebrated Grandparents' Day. And one of the problems that I've heard many elderly people state is this, that the older they get, the more they feel like they have been forgotten. That children grow and they move on with their lives. That grandchildren grow and they get busy about their own stuff. And oftentimes the people who have poured and planted into the lives of others feel like they have been forgotten and left alone. But I was reminded when I was studying about a story of a young man who was a behavioral problem. This young man was crazy. He was disrespectful. He respected no one. He did not respect his parents and he did not respect any authorities and all he had was his grandmama. It was his grandmama that because of his addiction that he had stolen from. It was his grandmama because of his addiction uh, that he had taken items from to, to feed and to fuel uh, the addiction that he was dealing with. But his parents died and his spouse left him and, and everyone else that was in his life had written him off and one day he decided that he was going to go to his grandma's house and knock on the door and when he knocked on the door grandma didn't even recognize who he was she did not recognize him by his appearance but she recognized him by his voice and without changing a word the boy Boy, grandmama said to the boy, boy, come on in. She invited him into the space wherein she used to feed him, used to take care of him, used to help him out, even though he had disrespected her in the days gone by. My brothers and my sisters, whereas you have been forgotten, I don't know who I'm preaching to, God is getting ready to orchestrate a season where you will be remembered.
remembered. Nobody is a better example of this than Joseph. Twelve years into Joseph's process of him being prepared, watch this, to sit at the right hand of Pharaoh. The Bible says that he, like Daniel, was in prison interpreting dreams. He interpreted the dream of his cellmate, the butler. He said to the butler, your dream means that in the time wherein Pharaoh calls for you, you are not only going to have your life spared, but you are going to be restored to your last and rightful position. The Bible also says that he and the butler entered into an agreement, and the agreement was this. When you get out, and when Pharaoh restores you, just remember me. And the text says, somebody ought to shout the text says, and the text says, the butler got out, and for two years, he served in the place that Joseph had told him he would serve. For two years, he walked in the restoration that Joseph told him he would experience. And for two years, Joseph sat in prison and was wasting away. But Pharaoh had a dream, and nobody could figure it out. And the butler was triggered, and he remembered Joseph, and remembered that Joseph interpreted his dream. Y'all miss what I said. And Pharaoh called for Joseph, and Joseph came out of prison. But not only did he come out, but he was elevated higher than he had ever been in his life. Can I preach to somebody in here who feels like you have been forgotten? God told me to tell you, this is the season where he's going to cause you to be remembered. Is there anybody in here who's ready for God to cause you to be remembered? I ain't talking to everybody, but I'm talking to those of you who are seed sowers. I'm talking for those of you who have taken the shirt off your back and given it to somebody else just so they could be closed. I'm talking to those of you who opened your doors and opened your checkbooks to people who were down on their luck. God told me to tell you this is the season that you are going to be remembered. If I ain't talking to you, don't say nothing. But if I'm preaching to you, give God 30 seconds of praise because this is your season to be remembered. There's no expiration. I don't know who I'm prophesying to. There's no expiration date on the seeds that you sowed. There's no expiration on the gestures of kindness that you showed. There's no expiration date of the sacrifices you made. And just when it looks like God has forgotten about you, God's going to cause you to be remembered. Shout yeah! yeah. Number two. Number two. I love this. Um, when you have no expiration date, check this out. This might not be for all of us, but for some of us. When you know who you are, you will never, I mean ever, be able to be bought. <laughs> Did y'all hear what I said? I said... That when you realize there's no expiration date, you will not exchange what God is doing in you for anything that God ain't in. <laughs> All right. I, 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 I ain't making this up. It, it, it's right here. In the text, text says, somebody ought to shout, the text says, text says in verse number 17, that Daniel said to the king, sir, I don't mean no harm, <laughs> but you can keep your gifts for yourself, and you can give your rewards to someone else. Translation is this. I will not be bought, controlled, or manipulated. I wish I had a witness. Because if I allow myself to do so, I become your slave. 
And if I'm a slave to you, I can't serve God. Daniel, my brothers and my sisters, had lived long enough to understand that God was his source. And that anything and anybody that God used to bless him was simply a resource. Daniel understood from the time that he was a boy, having been transported in exile from Judea to Babylon, he understood, watch this, that he was in the king's palace, not because of the king's power, but because of God's favor. God. He, he, he understood that it was not the king's food that would give him wisdom or strength. He understood that his wisdom, his strength, and his aptitude was God given. So Daniel is used, he is accustomed to trusting God, watch this, to meet his needs and to orchestrate his life. And so if any reward comes for him or comes to him, it does not come from resources. It does not come from people. It does not come from the king. It comes from God. He says, I have been in this place for well over 70 years. And what I've understood is there's nothing that the king that can, that can, can give me that can compare to what God has in store for me. So keep your money. Because if I, God have mercy, because if I allow your money to motivate me to do what I do, then whatever you give me can be taken away from me. I wish I had a witness in here. I wish that the body of Christ had people who were so spiritually minded that they would say no to what the enemy offers them to understand because nothing can compare to what God will do. And I wish we had people in this church. I mean the modern day church. Like the folk who were in the old church who would stand up and declare that can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like I wish we had people in the modern day church who would not be blown to and fro by fads and trends and all that kind of stuff just for the sake of being popular with people but I wish we had people who had this commitment I would rather be popular with God and have people hating me than to have people loving me and be on God's bad where are my people who say I would rather have Jesus than silver or gold I'd rather have Jesus and houses of land and when you realize that you have a gift that, is, that does not have an expiration date, you cannot be moved, manipulated you cannot be controlled by the whims of anybody who is not on the same page and in alignment with the will of God for your life come here for a minute, Paul help me to preach it the Bible says that Paul and Luke and the rest of the apostle they were traveling through the land and Paul was preaching and a man by the name of Simon who is a sorcerer he said to them I'll give y'all money if y'all give me the power that y'all have to cast out devils and he turned around and said to him your money perish with you I'm gonna preach whether y'all want me to or not will you tell your neighbor say neighbor what God gave you is worth more than any money money ha, that anybody can give you ha, and if folk flip on you ha, and don't want to help you ha, and if people flip on you ha, and don't want to assist you ha, all you got to do is lift your eyes ha, onto the hills ha, from when cometh your help for your help comes from the Lord will you tell three people God is my source And no expiration date. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but take heart. It ain't too late. There is no expiration date. Number one, you're about to be remembered. T tell yourself, I'm about to be remembered. Uh, number two, 
There's no expiration date. And you ain't for sale. Tell somebody, I can't be bought. I, I, I ain't for sale. I, I can't be manipulated. I can't be controlled. I, 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 I can't be hoodwinked. I, 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 I can't, I can't. Number three, and I'm closing. Watch this, y'all. Because there is no expiration date. Woo! I love this point. You will be elevated because of your integrity. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right let me say it again. Because there is no expiration date, you will, I probably should say, still be elevated because of your integrity. I'm not making it up. It's right here in the text. In, in verse um, number 16, listen to what happens. The king says, Daniel, I've heard that you're able to interpret and solve difficult problems. And sir, if you can read this writing, if you can tell me what this means, if you can tell me what the handwriting means, I'm going to give you purple clothes, give you a gold chain, and you're going to be made the third highest ruler in the kingdom. And in verse 17, Daniel says, keep your stuff. But after he interprets the dream, drop down to verse number 29. After he tells the man, this is what the handwriting means. Meaning, God has numbered the days of your reign and brought it to an end. To kill, you've been weighed on the scales and found one in Perez. Your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. He gave Belshazzar bad news and Belshazzar promoted him anyway. <laughs> The very stuff that he turned down. I wish I had a few witnesses in here. <laughs> he got it anyhow. And I ain't preaching to everybody. But I'm preaching to those of you who said no to some stuff. Just so you could keep your soul and your spirit and your mind right. God said because of your integrity, I'm going to get it to you anyway. Will you touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, that man is preaching to me. There's some things, come on son, I'm getting ready to go now. There are some things that the enemy offered me that I refuse to take. There are some things that the enemy tried to give me that I realized were beneath who I am there were some other things that looked good but they had no good attached to them there were some things and some people who tried to get into my space but my discernment told me not watch out for that one and God told me that because you said no standing in integrity he's getting ready to bless you in ways you could not imagine. Huh? Who am I preaching to in here today? Huh? God told me to tell you huh? that he's getting ready huh? to open up doors and make ways huh? because you stood huh? and you waited on him. Huh? For I heard the word of God huh? declaring the ears huh? of the people of God. Huh? They that wait huh? upon the Lord huh? who renew their strength. Huh? They'll mount up on wings of the eagles they'll run and not be weary they'll walk and not faint will you tell your neighbor say neighbor what you gave up in one season God promises to give it in another season and the 
Bible says, I feel like preaching that God will make your enemies bless you. Will you touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, get ready for God to make folk who don't even like you start blessing you. Get ready for God to cause that manager on your job who don't care nothing about God or his people. Get ready for him to cause them to promote you. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, get ready for everybody who mishandled you. Everybody who misused you. Everybody who misrepresented you to become a, a witness to who God is in your life. Can I go higher? Tell one more neighbor, say neighbor, because you stood in your integrity, because you told the enemy no, because you chose to trust in the Lord, hallelujah, and lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all your ways. He's getting ready to direct your path. He's getting ready to give you the answer. He's getting ready, ready to show you the path. He's getting ready to make a way out of no way. Just stand, stand, having done all, done all, all to stand. Keep standing. If you wait on him, he will strengthen your heart. I feel my help coming. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, not long from now, your strength, your help is going to kick in. Not long from now, God going to turn the tables. Not now from now, God going to flip the script. Not long from now, God going to turn it around not long from now God going to make the devil back up off your life not long from now the enemy is going to lose your children not long from now the enemy is going to lose your marriage not long from now God is going to set you free yes he is touch one more neighbor and say Hey, neighbor, watch God, watch God bless you when you least expect it, when you least look for it. God is going to show up and show out. Shout yay, shout yay, shout yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yay. Oh yes, oh yes, oh, 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 I feel a wind of change blowing in your life, I feel shifts and turn around coming your way, will you grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, the enemy has been cursing you, but God, is getting ready to turn every curse that the enemy sent into your path into a blessing. Lift your hands, open your mouth, and shout yes! Yeah! Shout yes! Yeah! Shout yes! Yeah! 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 Yes! You've come too far to turn around now. Yes! Blessing, favor, victory, increase, healing, deliverance, restoration is on the way. Shout yes! There it is. 
I don't care what the enemy says. There's no expiration date. He that began a good work in you shall perform it. Did y'all hear what I said? He that began a good work in you. Is there anybody in here who has said, God has started something great in me? He shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I can't imagine how Daniel must have felt 66 years <laughs> replaced, pushed aside. Out of all the great things he did, not just for the king, but for the entire kingdom of Babylon. Out of all the people's lives he saved, now he's been muted until God will always orchestrate an until. I don't know who I'm talking to. Just when you are in the heat of attacks and battles, God will always raise up a testimony as to who you are. He always will. I want to pray for those who say, Bishop, the enemy has tried to convince me that the expiration date is my personal prophecy. That my age, or watch this, my background, or my history, or my credit score, all suggests that it ain't gonna get no better than it is right now. Some of you, the enemy is trying to say to you, you ought to, and here's the words of you, you just lucky for things to be as good as they are. Out of all you've done and out of the message you've made. But God sent me here to tell you today that the expiration date just means that you ain't as fresh as you used to be. But you still got what it takes. The altar is open. Would you please come? Will you come? If you believe it, raise your voice. Come on. Turn in my favor.
listen, before we pray, Elder, you gave the Lord a deadline of Wednesday. And he said, by Wednesday, you'll see my hand move in your life. Were you here when we, in the prophetic word, when, earlier? Yeah. I wasn't asked about the gift. I just wondered if you were here when the word came, because by, by Wednesday, God loves to be challenged. He's sovereign and he moves when he wants to. But I promise you, there are times where God says, tell me what you want me to do for you. There's a woman, a widow who has debt because her husband died and she sins for the prophet. And the prophet says, well, what do you want me to do for you? She says, you know, the creditors are coming to take my house. I don't know why I'm bringing this particular passage to you, but the creditors are coming to take my house. <laughs> and he says, what do you have in your house? He said, I, I got a little bit of oil and I got a jar. He said, go borrow jars and pour. Sir, I know this is going to be a strange instruction, and I'm going to pray. For the next three days, pour, help, give, pray. The Lord gave me instructions at the beginning of this fast. And three of those instructions were what I'm telling you now. Keep serving. Keep praying. Stay observant. Step it up. Step it up. Step it up. Step it up. If that means you got to just, you know, like get some money out of a piggy bank and give it to somebody who's on the corner, serve them. And by Wednesday, sir, by Wednesday, you're going to see God's hand move. I want you to call me when it happens. When we finish praying, Elder, I want you to stay there. Father, in the name of Jesus, for these who are at this altar, thank you, Father, that their heart's conviction is that the word is true, that their expiration date has not passed. That you are the God who can do exceeding abundantly above all they could ever ask or think. That times and seasons don't dictate how or when or where you will manifest what you've promised. Now everyone who stands at this altar believing, everyone who stands at this altar trusting you, I want you, Father, to do just what you did for Daniel. Cause them to be remembered. Seed sowed. Acts of kindness extended. Help that was given. Secondly, Father, I thank you for insulating them, protecting them, and covering them, keeping them so that they will not downplay or downgrade themselves to accept anything other than what you have for them. And then thirdly, I thank you for a supernatural <laughs> meeting of the needs, whatever they may be. You said Daniel was blessed anyway with gold and scarlet, the color of royalty and elevation. I want you to elevate everybody at this altar 
however they need to be elevated in whatever context, in their jobs, in their businesses. God, if their families have given up on them, God, shine a light on what you're doing in their lives right now. I need you, God, to magnify them in the sight of people so that people can see that your hand is on them and that you are with them. Hallelujah. For the duration of their lives, I need you to do it, God, even as you did for Daniel. In Jesus' name. Now I bind the hand of the enemy. I curse everything that tries to curse your people. And I declare that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against them in judgment they will condemn. It is their heritage and their righteousness of God. It's in Jesus' name we pray now and we boldly declare the devil is defeated. God, you're exalted. Jesus, you're Lord. And all who agree with the prayer of the man of God shout a hallelujah. Amen. And thank you, Jesus. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Elder DeWan, stay at the altar. Everyone else, you may go back to your seat. Elder, I, I have no idea. I have no idea the nature. None whatsoever. But I've been moved to ask the men of TCI to sow into your life. Come here, sir. I did go to. Yeah, if you just stand. I need every man here. Brothers, if you got cash, if you got checks, you got a cash app? Sir, what is it? Level up, dollar sign, level up, 1978. Level up, L E V E L U P, 1978. I need every brother in here to sow. I have no idea what the need is, even if it's financial. They're still coming, they're still coming. Now I do know this, the Elder Dewan is a single father and only single fathers know what single fathering is like. Now, if the sisters want to be involved, you can. But the Lord told me specifically to ask the brothers to give because God's getting ready to do something with the men in TCI. And it's going to be undeniably and undisputably God. I need every man who was here and under the sound of my voice, and you brothers, there are men who are watching, or maybe women who are watching. Dollar sign, level up, 1979, 1978, 1978, dollar sign, 1978. You can sow into this brother's life. I need every man, listen, I need every man to hold on to the points of today's message. You're about to be remembered. You're about to be remembered. Number two, I'm promising you because of the life, I don't know what, I, I don't know which man I'm talking to, because of the life you've turned away from. God is going to honor you in the way that only God can. And then thirdly, because of your commitment to stick with your decision, God is going to bless you anyway. 
there is no man who has given up anything for the sake of Christ and his kingdom that you won't receive other things <laughs> are y'all hear what I'm saying And I don't, this is it I'm going to pray and to the brother I'm talking to who refuses to yield to temptation and ain't nothing going your way at the end of these 21 days watch what God does don't react don't react don't react You got 15 more days. Don't react. You got to close yourself off. Don't react. You got 15 more days. I'm telling you. Father, in Jesus' name, this man is trusting you. And now that he's trusting you, show him what trusting you will produce in his life. I thank you that the seeds that were sown will help him, but more importantly, God, I thank you that they will increase so that if there be any financial need, God, it will be met in whatever day, and whatever, whatever debt, whatever debt, whatever debt, whatever debt, whatever debt, whatever debt <laughs> will be supernaturally met and liquidated by you. Rabbi say in Jesus' name. And Father, just as you honored Jairus' prayer for his daughter and as you ordered, as you honored the Shunammite's woman prayer for her son. Honor his prayer for his son. In the name of in the Yama. Robo O Oma. Yes, God. In, in, the, in the name, in the name, in the name of in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. 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 Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on. Come on, praise God with it. Come on, lift those hands and worship, please. We're getting ready to go. While we're in this moment, if there's anybody who does not know Jesus Christ as his or her personal Lord and Savior, you can know him now in the free pardon of your sins. If you'll simply just say, Lord, save me, he will. Is there anyone? Will you come? For the word of God says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved.
Is there one who's made that confession, who's accepted him as your personal Lord and Savior? Will you come now? Secondly, if you don't have a church home and uh, you believe that Temple Church International is the place for you, we'd love to be a church family. We'd love to cover you, Lady T, and I will love to have you here, the elders and the leaders of TCI. Hallelujah. We'll be glad to have you here. If that's you, will you come? If you're watching there on Facebook Live, please, ma'am, please, sir, you can go to our website, tci-charlotte.com. Fill out our new members form if you want to become a part of our ministry. If you've given your life to Christ, fill out the salvation form. And we'll get back in contact with you, letting you know what we have in place. Well, if everybody's saved and satisfied, put those hands together and give God a hand clap of praise. Now is sweet and my joy is complete cause I'm saved, saved, saved. Listen, I want the men of TCI to, uh, to join our campaign. Real men pray. Somebody shout, real men pray. Okay. Did I say somebody whisper or did I say somebody? Somebody shout, real men pray. And the next Sunday, we're going to wear our shirts. Uh, and of course, um, there in the vestibule, um, Deacon Angie Greer will have the shirts for us if you've already paid. Um, you'll get your shirts and uh, if you have not you can order for next Sunday and they'll be here uh, we will uh, make sure that you get them um, for the next for the remainder of this fast I need all the men for the remainder of this fast I need all the men to join me every morning at 530 for 530 prayer a men's prayer call at 5.30 a.m. All the brothers say 5.30. 5.30. All right. We're ready now. If you did not get a chance to give your offering, please, ma'am, please, sir, would you raise your hand? And uh, if you need an envelope, we'll get it for you. Is there anyone? Is there anyone? All right. Bishop, we got prayer at 6 o'clock already. Yeah, we do. So, so 5.30. Now, ladies, if ladies, if if you if you got a husband or got a man in here, he better he better be on the call. Shake him up, wake him up. That's right. Shake him up, wake him up, or I will go until seven o'clock on the six o'clock prayer. <laughs> Let's stand that we may be dismissed. And my joy is complete Cause I'm saved, saved, saved Anybody know that song? Come on, saved Saved by your power divine Come on, saved Supply now is sweet, and my joy is complete. Cause I'm saved, saved, saved. Now, Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, what our hearts have felt. We thank you for your never ending love. Thank you, Jesus, for hanging on the cross, dying and shedding your blood. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your ever-abiding presence. God, we thank you that there is no expiration date for what you are doing in us and for what you promised. 
So now, Father, we thank you. And we ask you to dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. Now, beloved, remember your goal along the way to render the one evil for evil, render everyone good for good, overcome evil with good, and render your all into the most high God. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you henceforth now and forevermore. And all who agree with the prayer of the man of God, shout it hallelujah. Amen. And thank you, Jesus.